Hello there, and welcome to my new tutorial about the glass industry in Dwarf Fortress. In this one, I'm going to summarize how you make glass, what you can make out of glass, what's good about it, and what the drawbacks are. So, to jump right into the topic, let's talk about the requirements. First of all, you need a zone where you can collect sand at. Every area that has the tag sand in it, and purely only sand, qualifies. So whenever your tile has something like um, silt, clay, loam, or any word like that in the in the sand description, you're out. You need pure sand, like here, red sand, or we could also take that sand cavern floor here. That all would work. But uh, if it's uh, mixed with clay or anything like that, it doesn't qualify anymore. So when you have that, all you need to do next is to draw down a sand zone, that one here, and then your dwarfs will pick up sand from the designated zone. If you want to know where you can find guaranteed sand, well, that's beaches, badlands, and deserts. Everything else is a little bit of a luck-based thing, because nobody can guarantee you whether you have such a layer or not on your map. Okay, the next really important requirement are bags, because sand is always stored in a bag. You don't need a terrible huge amount of bags to get started with, but one to three open bags are a minimum for that. The more, the more sand you can store in the first place. Good. The other requirements would be a glass furnace, which can be made out of stone, and a kiln if you want to make the more advanced and more valuable forms of glass. Beyond that, you will require a lot of fuel, or if you are able to, you can also set up your glass furnace on a magma source. That is the most desirable kind of furnace to have because this negates a lot of the fuel costs in the whole glass making process. Without magma, glass is a very fuel intense business. Okay, so off to the next steps. To make some glass, next you will need to collect sand. You can make that happen at the glass furnace by adding a task for that. So. To store the sand in the vicinity of your glass furnace, you can create a stockpile zone, which looks like this here. I'm going to create a new one to show you how to set it up. So you create your stockpile zone quite in the vicinity of the sand industry or glass industry, and then you get on over into custom settings, furniture, and then you enable here in the type area the sandbags. But to make it happen, you really need to turn on all the quality types. If this is not enabled, nothing will get stored in the in the stockpile. With that kind of setting, you will get all the sandbags delivered to this zone here, as we have it here. Here I have already stored three bags of sand. It's a pretty nifty thing because this uh, allows you to pre collect the sand and that helps a lot. Then the next thing you will require is basically nothing. <laughs> you will you can make green glass directly out of sand and fuel and that's it. Green glass is already worth more than your standard uh, stone types and it ranges somewhere in between the lower value metals like uh, zinc and nickel and the like so copper and zinc at these so that's a big upgrade and basically you can create a, a stone a, a material that's more valuable than stone out of basically nothing because as long as you have fuel you can dig out endless amounts of sand there green glass can then also be used for all manner of different things trap parts and also here, the corkscrew. Basically, you can make the entire uh, interior of a pump out of glass. So you can make the corkscrew, you can make the blocks, and you can also make the uh, pipe section, except for the fact that it ain't called pipe when it's made out of glass, it's called tube. These three parts are 
forming a pump. Why is that interesting, you might ask yourself? Because everything made of glass is magma safe. So glass is an excellent way of getting yourself able to transport magma from A to B because you need a, a magma safe pump and you need magma safe uh, this and that's glass can provide and it's dirty cheap and endless so that's a really really big powerful um, side for glass besides that you can make book cases boxes cabinets you can even make doors out of it they're called portals here in that regard pots jugs chairs there's really so much usage that it can pull out of glass it's quite amazing and besides that you can also make gemstones that you can use to encrust your items so when you make raw green glass you can put that over to the jeweler who will then make cheaper gems but still gems you can use to encrust and improve the value of your items with it's an endless source of gemstone so to say so that's a really really powerful thing and green glass is already quite an impressive material requiring again like i said only sand and fuel no additives all right but there's more behind that now we also have clear glass and crystal glass clear glass is worth even more than green glass its value is pretty um, equal to metals like bronze so it's roughly five times as valuable as your standard stone and that's quite impressive isn't it so to make clear glass we will require sand fuel and pearl ash pearl ash is made at the kiln out of potash and that's where things get really really nasty so potash is made out of ash at the ashery so in the long run you really require a lot of different work steps in between and it's also a quite fuel intense thing because we we or well wood intense i should rather say because you you first take the ash then you process it further and further and uh, then you have to smelt the the actual products again at the furnace the kiln does require also fuel so you can sink a lot of coke into that industry but on the bright side you have the pro uh, the ability to produce clear glass and that stuff well it, it's quite majestic like green glass it has the same ways to to use it there's nothing uh, that clear glass can do that uh green glass can't do it's just more valuable so it's even better to encrust items with you can make really good um, furniture out of it but it comes at the price that you churn through a lot of wood but if you have a lot of wood and sand available it's a real interesting way of producing valuable gemstones or furniture materials that are on top of that magma safe and the last part is the crystal glass crystal glass is the only glass that doesn't require sand and it's even 10 times as valuable as your regular rock which makes it roughly around silver worth it's pretty majestic and it's been made out of rock quartz uh, no rock glass how was it called rock crystals exactly you can't find them underground and they are well sometimes found as gem clusters in your different layers the rock crystals will then be smeltered together again with pearl ash i was just checking out yeah here i had some but they were already mined away so you take again rock crystal pearl ash and the uh and this is going to go together with some fuel again and then you have your even more valuable material that's pretty powerful but uh well it's again very resource intense similar like the clear glass the crystal glass is even more limited because you need the rock crystals keep in mind that if you ever buy any cut rock crystals from a caravan you can't make crystal glass out of that you need rough rock crystal everything else won't work so 
in a nutshell, glass industry is a very, very versatile thing. You can make many, many things out of it, and the best part of it is it substitutes so many things. And basically, as long as you have a steady source of fuel available, nothing speaks against that to add this into the mix of your materials. Especially since it has a nice base value to it, even if you just use green glass. Even more so if you use the other types of uh, glass. But as a downside, you really require a lot of fuel and wood and these materials to make, the, make it happen. And, uh, well, wood is used in so many different ways. But if you live in an area like I do here, with tons of wood around me, and there's really no good reason not to do that in this regard. So I hope you found that quite helpful. There's not much more to add. Feel free to leave me any comments and uh, let me know how you pull off your glass industry. So leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up. And if you enjoyed that one, chances are you enjoy the rest of my stuff as well. Also, in the description box, I have put a link to the glass industry on the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia, some playlist link to the other tutorials of mine, and some support links to my channel. As a free content creator, I have no big sponsorships, I have only this grand community supporting me, and I'd be really delighted if you checked those links out, and a big, big thanks to all the people supporting this channel. I really deeply appreciate. So, hope to catch you guys on the next one. Have fun with the glass making and see you there.